Nice little pawn push here, it's just giving space for his... I'm actually going to attack this pawn here. I'm not sure how slow that movement was. So we could go with the queen. I'm going to go with the queen, seeing as the knight's not attacking at the minute. He might go for a small piece here, or they might concentrate on giving some space. Yeah, okay, so the knight's out. We could push on to the knight. Now the pawn takes, queen takes, because their queen isn't facing our queen. How much of a tempo do we lose? Not too sure. Let's just be careful because there, the knight can take. We take, take the pawn. So either way, kind of feels okay for us. Probably the knight is going to take because it's wanting to give its queen a bit of space. I feel like I'm moving a bit quick in this game. <laughs> okay. Let's focus. So the pawn does actually take. So we could still take with the knight and be attacking their knight. And then the knight takes, queen takes, and at least we get a knight off the board. Because obviously the queen is not going to take because the knight will take. So I think we'll take with the knight, obviously. They're not forced to take the knight. That's the thing. Yeah, so he's come with the bishop, bishop's attacking. Um, we don't have a check on their king per se, so they're trying to shoot our queen away from protecting the knight. And these are how sort of tempos are lost and all that. So we could come here, but then again it could come there with the queen and um, bishop. So then he's going to have two pieces on the knight. So that won't work with us because the only thing that we can defend it with is the rook. So we would lose out. So potentially bringing the queen back here. And if they do go for the attack on the knight, we can then go here with the bishop. So that's what I'm thinking. Also, issue is that the knight can come here and attack the queen as well. But if they attack our queen, we can move. Uh, we're going to lose the knight. We can go here, but then his knight can take. Yeah, so got to be careful with that maneuver. Interesting. We come here, knight either goes here or here to attack the queen. I think it's probably best going here because it stops it from going here. We can't take their bishop. Ooh, am I overthinking this? But that looks a little, looks a little bit juicy for them, doesn't it? We can't come here with the queen because the bishop's still on the queen. Take their knight, but then obviously the bishop just takes the queen. Wow, okay, that happened fairly quickly, didn't it? I think that's a bad position for us. We can't even come across here because, well, we could because the knight can't take our knight. So we win a bit of a tempo there. Do we? Can he come down and attack? I think we have to get a kind of tempo I think hopefully that works so knight can't take that, that was going to cause us some problems I've moved away from my king now so I feel like my king is home alone but I'm hoping fingers crossed that having talked through that situation that was a bit scary we ended up losing the knight So they're fashioning more pressure on our queen somehow, surely. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We're on a white square. He could push down, but we take, could push here to then go here. So that gives us time to just take his knight off the board and get repositioned. I think. So they've castled, I'm not going to waste any breath on that. 
yeah, they don't look like a. I'm going to put a two on one on the knight with the x-ray with the rug onto the queen. I'm getting a little bit urgent because obviously I don't want to kind of lose my queen in any way shape but at the same time I want to keep pressure on them because they had a momentary moment of pressure, potential pressure on us. So until I've got my pieces out and I'm feeling comfortable I need to just keep some attack. Whoa, what is this now? He's coming here. Look at this. Genius at work. Genius at work. Bring the bishop here. Tuck in there, bishop. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Yeah, okay, let's do that. Still have the attack here on the knight. If the rook comes, we still have a two on one on the knight. It does take, so I'm going to take, does he have a repetition type thing? Screen's just frozen for a second there. It doesn't have a no, not by the rook. So the knight has to go and move, obviously. It's attacking our queen. It's got no protection on it at the moment. Does he have a magic square to go to? Can I go here and just attack his queen? Oh, he's got on my pawn, you know. His queen's on my pawn. They could have taken that, but they would have. Okay, let's go here. The queen is on the pawn. I was just wondering if he could have taken there anyway. Because if we'd have taken his knight, he would have taken our rook. Yeah, this is a crazy game. It's a crazy pressure game. Both of us basically, first of all, they had that initial pressure with my um, strange, ooh, strange looking position. And then they attacked our king area. I'm going to need to get my knight out, aren't I? Because it doesn't look like it. I could still go, no, I can't. Get the knight out, blocking the queen from here. Looking to see if we're going to get a queen exchange. I think he's going to be challenging our rook. Like we said. Okay, so let's go and attack their queen. Rook takes, rook takes. I don't think he's going to exchange again, but let's see. More pieces I can get off, the less damage, hopefully, fingers crossed, they can do to us. So it's still even, Stevens. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have a split pawn here, isolated. We have put pot, uh, poor majority on the, on the old queen side. They've got poor majority on the king side. Well, they're taking this long. I don't think they're actually going to exchange. Just swinging back again. So what do we do? Could look to attack their knight. Yeah, it's not exchanging, it's gone nice. Front of our king, but also let's have a look at this diagonal. Attacking a pawn. It's greedy munching a pawn. Just, uh, kind of stopping the knight from going here. Take his rook, his rook comes, rook comes again. But then he's still on this pawn. It's full of tricks. Could push this pawn, just blocking that activity. Can't push the rook up because he'll just take. Could bring the rook here, protect him. But that's really not going to. Rook takes, rook takes. Back in that same situation. Hmm. Okay, for something to do, just move the rook here, protecting. Don't really want like, it supporting a pawn, that's not really what they're there for. So he's taking away my ownership rights of this file. I think he's going to now take. Knight comes down. Knight's on the back, then his rook's just going to come and face us again. Hmm. On the back foot. Been on the back foot since that 
strange looking position play that I had earlier on where I'd misplaced my queen. Well, it didn't misplace it, it's just that it was in a position that was not too favourable for us. And since then, the opponent's not really let go. Yeah, he's going for it. Is this knight going to jump here? No, no, I did say his rook was just coming straight there. I don't know what benefits it's got doing that, though, but we shall see. If we come here, then I suppose he can come down there, can't he? Or in fact, he can even come here, attacking this pawn. I'm going to push this for now. Oh, look at the fork on that. I'm sorry, I went quiet because I thought, that's an amazing fork. There's no way maybe he's going to let me get away with coming here and taking that and getting a back rank checkmate. But that is the tunnel vision, isn't it? That was just... <laughs> uh, be ready for a free gift. That's what my training's been pointing towards. Ah, uh, Bless. Okay, we'll go on to the next one. Okay, next 15-10 game. Nice little practice session. Let's just develop the knight, supporting the pawn. Just going to capture a thing here. And let's leave that like that as we do. So probably not to play too fast. I think I played a little bit quick in the last one. I got my queen in a bit of a position. I'm just going to develop the knight. So the tournament game that we're going to is uh, 90 minutes and 30 seconds, I think. 90-30. So a long time to think of the game moves. So let's make sure this is only a 15 minute, 10 second game, but it's it's long enough. Let's uh, develop the bishop, keep it simple. If I focus on simple, simple, hopefully won't get caught out with anything too fancy. So defending the knight, obviously, because he's got the knight. Attacking the knight and the bishop attacking. Obviously the pawn's gonna take if one of them takes. This particular type of opening is a move order type thing for a better position. Um, you can get worse positions, but I'm looking for a better position. So this is why I'm just saying the pawn will take no matter what piece takes. So it stops the knight from jumping to these areas here. Yeah, so the pawn takes no matter what. It's finally moved. It's so tempting to just push there, but don't really win out, do you? Because he's got three pieces, well, four pieces on there. Yeah, and we've already got one, two, two pieces, really. So that's no 
biggie. So we're going to castle clean safety, I believe. Just like we said, we did that for a better position on the board so we're not scrabbling around. Yeah, the queen's out just going to attack the bishop we like this position like i said did this type type of maneuver for a better position i mean it doesn't have to take it can always swing it back or even support his pawn here just to be a bit dry does actually capture which leaves the rook quite nicely facing the queen obviously the queen is going to move and potentially looking for the cheapy aren't they again we know the classic why did that arrow go like that then it's still going like that wow oh it's because it's a dark square bishop numpty <laughs> i'm checking it on the white square yeah so looking for this particular position here like this with the queen facing this pawn here that's probably why they're taking so long deliberating. Do I just move there, go for the cheapy? Am I going to get away with it? So, you know, when you're doing your pattern recognition type things, we keep mentioning this all the time, people going for the cheapies, and people do get away with them. You know, if you're not aware of it, or you think that it's not going to work, and you just do something else, and then you get caught short, and you think, how did I get caught with that cheapy? Well, it's because you weren't paying attention. So he's come here because obviously we can go here with the pawn. So does he want us to have this jam down for some reason? Or is he looking to support the pawn? So does he think that we're not going to push onto the bishop? Plenty of things to be considering. Could move the knight back around here because then the rook is definitely facing the queen. Closing up shop, I have a dark square bishop myself, and if I close the center off, then really I'm closing my own bishop off. Could come here. Then it just drops onto the knight. Can't go there because the pawn is there. Yeah, so I think pushing onto the bishop is going to be the best thing to do. It's just when you like if I do a bishop move like that, I'm doing it to entice the pawn up. You know, I'm doing it to tantalize it, you know, finesse it up so that I can get a better position on the board. So in my head, I'm thinking I don't really want to do it because he's wanting me to do it. Or did they make a mistake? I'm really focused on the rook being and I want to sort of do something. I can't go here though because his queen will just take. If his queen takes our knight, our rook can take his bishop. Who's in a better position? Well, we're kind of we're not owning it because this pawn can actually touch. We're on a dark square. So then. The, the, then his pawn pushes down onto our rook. Can't hit the queen because this pawn is here. So I'd have to come back. Queen's there by itself, so it's not going to cause too much trouble, is it? Hmm. Do you know, I'm actually going to try that. I've got to start throwing myself into these things. Um, if it doesn't, we've got a two on one with the knight and the rook. It must be okay for us. 
as usual, we'll always find out that they don't do what we're expecting them to do. <laughs> Queen's here. We take. His pawn pushes down to get the rook out of the way. Does the picture change? The bishop's got this here. Ooh, la -de da So the rook could come across here and attack the queen because we've got support here. Obviously, it's not trapping it, so it just means that it has to move out of the way. But then our rook is in the center of the board, isn't it? And we fell foul of that in the previous game. We got out. We got out of it. But yeah. Maybe not. Rook. I don't think we'll have time to do that. But if the pawn's there, the rook can't come across. Queen takes, rook takes, pawn drops. Yeah, so we can't actually go for the queen anyway. Nothing like what we said, did we? At all, in any way, shape. <laughs> oh, dear me. Oh, crap. So has that given us a little bit of something now? Because we can push on to the bishop, can't we? But then he can take the um, knight for free. And we can't, well, we can take the pawn, take the bishop with the pawn. Or do we just take the bishop, then the knight takes, then we can push the pawn onto the knight. Ooh, and where does the knight go though? Does he have a check on our king? He does have a fork. Oh, that's annoying, isn't it? I've just seen it now, but. We take, knight takes, we push onto the knight thinking we're cool. He comes down here with a check on the rook and the queen. We take his queen off the board. He takes our queen. He's going to be down pieces though, isn't he? Let's take. Push. So we'll come here for the cleverness. Yeah. Excuse me. And we take. Oh no, they're not. Oh no, I'm down pieces. Oh, damn. Just seen the picture now. I lose the damn rook. <laughs> oh, this ain't fair. That was so beautiful. Oh, but I just need to bring this back here. Uh, oh, it can take the pawn there. Oh, gutted. Oh, I'm gutted. I thought we had it sewn up there. Bishop takes, no, takes the rook. Yeah, I can't be having that, can I? I'm just after where the fact that he's got that pawn. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, uh, I can't go there. Oh, he gets the pawn. He's on my bishop. I'm not going to have time to take this pawn. Jeez, wheeze, damn, can you believe it? Oh, I thought I had that sewn up. It looked so beautiful in my head. I thought I was going to be a minor piece up, if not two. Oh. Too arty. Got too arty then, didn't I? I should have simplified it. Ah, oh, dear me. Why is it taking so long? Just a simple take of here. Yeah. Don't know why that took so long. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Does he want the bishop? Can't even come here. Gonna have to push, push, push.
<sighs> Tempting to just come here, oh, excuse me, come here. Now we can't do that because he can take the pawn and he's supported by here. So his knight does escape. That's why the problem was taking so long because the knight was potentially trapped. But the only escape route was coming here to come here to get a fork on. So they've escaped. I don't think there's any credence in coming here because he just drops a pawn to protect. If we go there, he's going to hit our rook by jumping here. If we go here, he takes the pawn and hits our rook either way. Takes the pawn and hits the rook. Looking for a discover check here. So that's not going to work just yet. So I think I'm going to hit him first. Looking for potential for the bishop to get into the game somehow, but I think he may just go there anyway and just block it all off. But then we do have this. But then he's going to hit our rook. <coughs> it's going to hit our rook first. Yep. So he's hit the rook first. So we need to bring the rook back. Is it? Yeah. He's attacking the pawn. So we want him to get this knight out of the way so we can get the bishop into some sort of activity that's the way i see it i think he's going to attack the knight uh, rook sorry giving us things to think about we can squeeze in here a little bit so the more times he's dancing with the knight the less he's getting castled but at the minute there's no major threats on him so he's got time to castle now Which then takes the sting of the bishop coming here out of the water. So I'm attempting this resilience thing. We're down a pawn again. So trying to fight back now, trying to find a better position if we can. Try and put some pressure on pieces. I mean, this is doing a lot of work, is this night. So hopefully that tempo of them dancing the night has made them lose a bit of movement and position on the board but he's a deep thinker so he's always finding appropriate things for us to have to react to i took a bit of a chance in the early part as i thought well let's try something different and my position didn't pan out too well i think really um this is i'm kind of demonstrating to myself that you know, putting the rooks in the center of the board really doesn't board too well. We can get out of it, but really, um, this is why in the mantra we do say, uh, so it's taken, it's still on the dark square though. So I'm actually still going to push. So obviously he's coming here to attack the rook. Not saying it's going to work but we're trying to follow some sort of method to gain a better position and it's freed up space again for our rook as well to come here if need be to maybe start attacking the king obviously it's going to escape around here it's not actually a tactic oh, okay so it's if we do come here his pawn takes, we take, his knight takes, bishop puts a check on his king. So we're going to be down pawns for no reason. <laughs> Swing the rook up, maybe look at, no, he's just going to exchange. It's a better position than this position though, isn't it? Got to get this bishop in. If we go one, he takes. We bring the bishop through, x-ray in, he takes again, so we don't want to do that. Boom. 
takes, takes, knight takes. So we're giving him, giving him another pawn. So he's going to be two pawns up. Bishop comes here with a check on the king. Knight can obviously just jump back, which he probably would do, or the king can just move out of the way. Maybe not to there. Hmm. Swing a rook across here to put a check, but he's just going to go for the exchange. Hmm. Improve the rook. Oh, I'll get this bishop in the game. Push. No, there's so much pawns there. Boom, 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 boom. Let's improve an attack here. After all that, there's a two on one. Knight's obviously looking, but this bishop's protecting at the minute. Such a bad bishop, it's unreal. I don't know how we're ahead on time. I feel like I've spent ages trying to calculate this game. So definitely no more rooks in the centre of the board now. As we're kind of demonstrating, we are getting out of them, but it is harder work than it needs to be, I think. I've tried to make them flexible, but then it's not they're not flexible. They genuinely do like files like this, you know, half open files or you know, they're like working together, stuck in the centre. If they're going to sacrifice, then sacrifice for a good position. But recently, we've not really found that for our pieces. So, just really got to hang fire with it. Although, even when I look back on the movements that I made, I had a rationale for each of the moves. You know, like, oh, it's potentially going to put up some potential pressure onto the king area. Or there's a loose pawn here that is going to weaken their structure so we can mobilise the rook. So I think that's probably why we've been able to escape because we've also looked at the escape route for it, even though it did, did look kind of dangerous and it potentially could get trapped. Um, it wasn't a trap that was going to be anywhere immediate. It just looked ugly for the rook because they do like the open files better. I hope that explains that. So in essence, I've not put them in a dangerous position. I've just put them in a position that they don't really like. This has gone into a deep thing. So what can protect this pawn here? What can he attack? Um, that's what he's thinking. Can he bring his, this rook into the game somehow? Looking to come round the back or maybe attack this pawn here. I think that's potentially the type of movement that we're going to see. So if we do take, he doesn't have to take, you know, that's the thing. He doesn't have to, he can just sit there. But if he doesn't, then we um, get his rook off the board. So he does take, we take, maybe his rook comes down now. Look at that exact move. So maybe his rook then comes down to attack this pawn. Our rook can't take this pawn because this knight is in the way blocking this pawn so it's always going to be a pawn up so blah, 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 blah. and we can push this pawn up and that's where we're going to be stuck yeah so we take like I said don't have to take but I think he will take well maybe he did have to take anyway so let just following that process. So he comes down for this pawn. We push this pawn up. So practicing this resilience thing is is hard work. 
you look at those games that you watch on television, you know, the um, championship games and that type of stuff, and you'll see all the exciting stuff, you know, because they want it to be entertaining, so they focus on the uh, exciting games and stuff like that. But more times out of ten, the games that you don't see, if you're not a chess fan and you're not into into that, and you're just looking at the excitement of all what you know what can actually happen on the board, fantastic position, all that sort of stuff, you're probably not going to be interested in playing chess for very long if you're going to start learning how to play. Most of the games, if a normal layperson looking at it would go, well, that's boring, that's dry, there's nothing interesting going on there. Um, but that is the meat on the bones. The exciting games that you see, they're few and far between in terms of, oh yeah, you know, let's, let's go in there and make it all exciting. Real chess is hard work. Real chess is bloody hard work. It's, it, it's not exciting in that sense it's exciting as for you as a player in able being able to be resilient and deal with the attacks that the opponent's putting on you and then focusing on your areas and nine times out of ten it's equal for the majority of the game yeah and then it's that one tiny movement that is erroneously done that then changes the ball game so he's come down i didn't expect them to come here because is his knight looking to come down at some point? Okay, let's take some time. I mean, I was looking at just moving here because he does know that this pawn is free, so I think he's probably going to come behind here like this, isn't he? But then if he comes behind there, like I said, we can just go here. So what's this knight planning to do? Is he planning to make a little dance round? Pawn can take here. Uh, waiting for this pawn to push up. Do, 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 don't know. See, look, somehow some sort of two on one on the bishop with, with the knight and the um, rook. We have a pawn majority in the centre here, but we can't make it work because if we did, it's that same old story again. He takes, takes, knight takes. But then we have the rook here that can put a check on his king. But if his knight is here, does he get to have a fork? No, he doesn't. Let's go with that while we're talking. But as has been proven time and time again, the opponents do not do what we think they're going to do. Now we could just come and sit here, but then, yeah, so he's taken, so we're going to take here. The only piece I can take is this. If we take, then he takes here, but it does actually go for that. So we've got to check on his king. Now, this is where we might get a bit stuck. His rook's on a dark square, but we can't get to his king at the same time. Unless he moves his king here, and then if we push onto this pawn, and they forget themselves. Oh, we can't move the bishop. Oh, I've moved too fast. I've moved too fast. The king should have been here first and then I would have been able to get that. Oh, I've moved too fast. That's a waste. Oh, that's a waste. I got too giddy. <laughs> I could kick myself. Oh. That's a damn it moment. That is a damn it moment. Oh, can you believe it? All I had to do was move that there and that might have won us the... It's obviously seeing it now, which is a damn shame. Oh, got it. It's going to just put checks on me now. Check, 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 check.
get carried away with the flow of things. It's got it's the move order. You got to get those right. I'm not the only player that does this sort of stuff, you know. Um, so I'm definitely not beating myself up and saying, "Well, oh, yeah, um, I'm rubbish and all that sort of stuff." This happens to many chess players. Uh, you get giddy, you focus on it, and but it's a move order. Take that moment, take that time, take a breather. Now this opponent's taking all the time in the world to put checks on me, left, right, and centre. Oh, he's blocked it. He's blocked it. Check on me and everything, King Cat move. Ay, ay, ay. It's going to get my bishop into. In fact, my king's going to end up coming back here. I can feel it in the water. If the king attacks, so we can take the pawn. If he attacks here, that's what I'm expecting him to do. We can go here, but then that would cause us some serious headache because all he's going to do is that. So that's what he's wanting us to do. He wants us to go here, so his knight goes and gets the magical fork. It was me that was wanting the pins, so now I'm going to have to sit back here. That ain't right. here but he still gets the magical fork so let's just sit back king comes here rather than attacking the rook so he wants to babysit this pawn down oh dear the pain the pain it is a 10 second increment i don't think i'm gonna last if only the if buts and maybes if only i'd moved the king a little bit earlier I might have been quids in with the bishop skewering. Oh, what is this now? And now the rook's going to be there supporting the pawn coming all the way down. Oh, bad form. Bad form. And they're back again on the plus one. Like I say, I wouldn't focus on the time here because it is a 10 second increment. You can get that back like that. You just need to just move quick. Bang, 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 bang. So I think the king's going to attack our rook. If we take... Then they take, move up, who's down, take. It's kind of like a draw type thing. So it must be a bullet specialist now with the 10 second increment. Pow, 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 pow. Oh, he's going for something. I bet you I've trapped myself. Let's take it anyway. Uh, the further away my king goes. No, no. It's a, it's a draw. Well, we got lucky. If it's a draw, we've showed the resilience. Like I explained. Yes, there we go. Most chess games... Um, if you're developing in your chess games, they, they will end in draws based because everyone else wants to do what you want to do against you, you know. Is King's further advanced up the board? Does that mean something? Is that a bit of an advantage for them? Yeah, so he's pushing further down. Let's push, put a check on. Comes across here. Um, well, okay, I'll hold my, let's just push here, because then he has to go backwards now, doesn't he? 
Not sure if that was a benefit having it come down. I think maybe it should have been behind the pawns. It's still a draw. I can't get anything out of it unless he does something really bad. So they'll be a bit annoyed that they're having to go backwards. But now I think if we move our king here, then they're going further backwards, which is not really what they wanted to do. We could bring our king in, but then he just drops his pawn, which is not good. We could push this pawn up. He pushes down. And then it's kind of a draw. But if we can get our king across here, I'm going to push. If they use the same science then they're just going to move the king across it's tempting to just push this pawn down here thinking we're going to take but I'm not going to take I'm actually going to bring my king over here then it is a draw if they know how to work it that is um... this king probably needs to go here to stop me But maybe, I think, because his king's at the back, it's still a draw, but his king's in a kind of precarious position where he may lose tempo, but he could just keep going side to side, I suppose. But I think my king could block off the squares and make it a little bit difficult for him to come back here. And our pawn is on a promotional square, actually. <clears throat> it's better than being on the far flank. So we could probably get a queen. So he's getting kind of zugzwanged ish. So really, because he's going to come to the edge here, but then he's going to run out of squares. Because he can't come back here. So we take, and this is like the opposition thing now. And I think it still is a draw really, but we'll see. Let's come to the side. Yeah, I mean, if I push the pawn, it's still going to... It's not right, really, is it? It's a draw. Could come here. He just comes opposite. Yeah, I should be a bit further up before I start pushing the pawn, you see. If I push here, he just comes and blocks. If I push again, but this is on a nice, this is a nice square for the um, pawn. I think we can get away with it. I think we can. So he comes across. If we push, then he can't go to the side side. He has to go back. He has to go back, and then the king hopefully can come across. Can he? Yeah, come up a bit. And then he's going to have squares to go to around the side. And then we get a promotion. Uh, yes, he can move. He can move. It's one of those odd bod positions. So he can, if he goes across, we put a check on. And he can still escape. Or he can go to this here. So that's where it's a draw. So I think it is a draw, you know. Because I can't go anywhere else. <laughs> I can come here and he comes there then I come round the back and then he got yeah so like he's going in a circle oh I thought we had a little bit of an edge but no it's a draw I go here then I go behind and he can't move yeah okay I accept that it's a draw I thought there was a way of getting into it but you have to have the proper opposition really the king being up front yeah he just goes back and we're just going round in circles. I'm trying one more thing, but it's not going to work. If he goes into the corner here, 
then I have to come back around again. Yeah. So if I go there, then it just goes here. But then he's going to have to go to the other side. So at least we've blocked off a square. Now he can go here. But now our king can go up and get promoted with the pawn. So that was a different way of working it. Um, I thought there was a way of doing it, you know, without having the opposition. And they've resigned. Whew! That is resilience training. Um, most definitely, you know, when the pawn is on this file here. If it's on this on the edge file, you've got no chance. It definitely is a draw. Um, if it's on this file here, you do have a bit of a chance. Um, nine times out of ten, you have to have that opposition thing, you know, with the king being in front and um, working opposite. But as you can see in this particular game here, if you work it appropriately and get your king to the side, then you're giving the king a little, little bit of space to move. But it all again depends on the movement of the king or their king. And it probably would have been a draw if maybe somebody um, higher rated or whatever um, knew how to work it. It would have been a draw. But I know I thought there was some sort of way of trying to get an advantage. So resilience training is working. It helps you think a little bit deeper. And we were down a pawn, down pieces in this game. Um, we came back and fought for a better position um, as well, so that's not too bad.